Shed Tins is a corruption of St John at Tins. The Knights of St John's Jerusalem, in other words Crusaders of the Middle Ages, had their own hostelry and a water mill here. Henry Lafone ran a business at Butler's Wharf. In the Great Dock Strike of 1889, he was the only employer to agree with the dock workers. They went on strike for six months an hour, known as the Dockers' Tenor. Henry continued to pay his workers, despite them striking, giving each man an extra two shillings for Sundays when there was no work. The Dockers' strike victory was a massive blow to employers, who used their workforce as slave labour, keeping them in poverty. Maggie Blake was a local lady who had a beer in her bonnet. When this area was redeveloped in the 1980s, the Thames was granted off to the locals, who had been using the ancient right to river access here for centuries. Maggie campaigned successfully to get the gates removed and access was restored to the riverfront for everybody to enjoy. In 1794, John Butler bought a series of warehouses to accommodate his grain business. The warehouses contained all sorts, tea, coffee, spices, rubber, in fact lots of exotic cargo from the West Indies. The wharf has now transformed into a residential area with bars and restaurants. The Design Museum occupies part of the site now. It's a mecca for artists and designers. Jacob commemorates the drag horses used by carriages. He was specially flown in by helicopter and now forms part of the circle luxury development. In the 19th century, this area, known as Jacob's Island, was a dark and dangerous place. There was no sanitation, no proper toilets and no clean drinking water. So is it any wonder that cholera was right here throughout the Victorian era? In Victorian times, this area was teeming with dockers, blacksmiths, sailmakers and sailors. So of course, there were untold amounts of pubs, snugs and tobacconists here. And being an area full of granaries and mills, there were numerous ships biscuit makers. Among these were Peak Friends and Jacob's Biscuits. The area was owned by the monks of Bermondsey Abbey. The river powered the monk's mill and provided the flour for their daily bread. Mill Street is a reminder of this. This 19th century mill was virtually demolished in the 1990s and rebuilt as luxury flats. It won an award for its design. is really called St Saviour's Dock, or sometimes Savory Dock. St Saviour's Dock is where the now subterranean Lickinger River flows out to meet the Thames. The neckinger is named after the devil's neckerchief, a euphemism for a hangman's noose. 
river pirates, footpads and highwaymen were hanged by this river. The Guardian's office is a tasteful late 19th century building that is typical in its Art Nouveau design. Originally, it played host to the parish guardians, and in later years it was the relief office for Bermondsey and Lewisham. It is now a luxury flat, and fortunately the facade has been kept intact. This is a very modern church, having been rebuilt after a wartime bomb destroyed the original 1835 Gothic structure. Dickens' estate is named in honour of Charles Dickens, and that is why the London County Council have named the estate blocks after his characters. Bermondsey legend Tommy Steele lived and played here as a child. Suffolk Council has its own group plaque scheme to honour its special people, places and events, and Tommy Steele was awarded one. The family later moved to Fringe Tree, now being redeveloped. It's planned to name a block in his honour. The Ship of Rome pub has been around since the 18th century but the current building is 1930s Mock Tudor. Bermondsey Wall was originally just that, a wall. When the area was very soggy marshland, it was prone to flooding. Bermondsey is way below sea level, so walls were built to keep the river at bay. And as the walls were easier to walk on than boggy marsh, people used them as roads. In later years, all things maritime were produced here. Sailmakers and rope makers were plentiful, along with marine stores and mast makers, to name but a few. Chambers Wharf built in the 1930s, was the first cold storage warehouse. They took the place of old granary walls, which had become infested with rats. In the war, the basements were used as shelters. Local rumour has it that in recent years, gold bullion was safely stored here. Now there is nothing left, just a pile of rubble. Chambers Wolf isn't here anymore. Cherry Garden Pier is a 17th century addition to Bermondsey. People alighted here to visit Jamaica House, where refreshments could be taken in a pleasant garden beneath the cherry blossom trees. Diarist Samuel Pete took a boat and landed at the pier. 
here he dined, got tipsy, and watched his maids running races over the lawn. This house has survived so many changes. It stood the bombings of the Second World War, being dangerously close to the targets of the river and the Surrey docks. In Victorian times, it belonged to a docks against it. This was back in the days when body snatching was rife in this area. It's rumoured he paid youngsters to fish out corpses from the tents for him to dissect. They were brought through a secret tunnel into the basement of the house. The tunnel has long been sealed up. In later years, the house became rather high police station and it's now offices. These statues have become local icons. The trio of Dr. Alfred Salter, his daughter Joyce and her cat were created by Diane Gormby. He and his wife Ada had just the one daughter, Joyce, who tragically died aged eight from scarlet fever. He's still a much loved and respected figure. It's now local legend that if you touch Joyce's hand, she will bring you luck. The angel dates back to medieval times. It was moved in 1682 to its present site and is believed to have been known as the Salutation, which was owned by the monks of Bermondsey Abbey. They used to make their own owl here and sell it to raise funds for the church. The current building is early 19th century. It was a known haunt of thieves and smugglers. King Edward III had a residence here at Platform Wharf. It was uncovered beneath a demolished warehouse. This is all that remains of his moated manor house. Archaeologists have found royal chambers, a chapel and a privy jutting out over the moat. Edward was described as excelling in all the knightly arts and loved to go hunting, probably in the woods around Charlton. This pile of stones would have been his country retreat. The Angel is a lovely place to spend a summer evening. You can sip a pint, look upstream to Old Horsley Down and drink in the history and take in a fantastic sunset. <laughs>